I believe that ChatGPT works wonders for the neurodivergent brain. And today I'm gonna to be sharing with you 13 of my favorite ways to use it. Let's talk a little bit about why. As a neurodivergent person, I tend to struggle with things like decision paralysis, task initiation, brain overwhelm, mental load, and I don't always know how to get unstuck. I found that ChatGPT and AI tools are the best way for me to get out of my head and just get it onto something that will be able to parse through it and understand and figure out what is going on in my head. I love it because it mirrors back what we're saying so we can actually dissect what we're actually thinking. It actually helps us cut through the noise and really figure out what's actually going on. It simplifies the next steps and just really helps you clarify what you need to do next. Now, I use the Chat GPT Pro plan, which I believe is $20 a month. You can start with the free one, but I do think that as a power user, it I kept running into the limits and I didn't want to keep switching back and forth to different uh, AI programs. So I ended up just investing and I think it was definitely worth the money. They recently added cool new features like folders, which has been really helpful. For example, one video I'm going to be doing in a couple months is how I'm using Chat GPT to help fix my skin. As many of you guys saw, I recently have figured out that I'm most likely hypermobile has major impacts on my skin. And so what I've been doing is I've been using ChatGPT to filter out products I should be using or not using because a lot of them I should not have been using on my skin. And it's telling me which ones I should buy instead. I'm going to be doing a full video on that in a couple of months once my skin is much more improved. But I have now created a folder inside of ChatGPT just for that project. So it remembers all of those conversations and it kind of knows exactly what is going on. ChatGPT has a good memory for the most part, but it doesn't remember every single conversation. And so sometimes it's better to put them into folders. So today I'm going to be running through 13 general ways that I use it. These aren't specific prompts, but they're just more general ideas that I thought would be helpful for people, especially if you're new to AI or new to ChatGPT and want some place to start. One of the first things I also want to say is I do auto dictation a lot more than I do typing. I have ChatGPT downloaded on my desktop computer as well as on my phone so I can use both on the go. I really like the desktop version. I don't like using the uh, browser version. Actually download it to your computer. I believe it's available for both Mac and PC. So what I do is I literally just hold the record button and start talking to ChatGPT. Like it's my personal assistant, like it's my therapist, like it's someone who is helping me out and really it understands me completely and even if it makes sense of what I'm trying to say. So I've broken it down into four major categories and the first category is executive functioning and life systems. So the first one is breaking down overwhelming tasks into step-by-step -step processes. So I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm just looking at something and I'm like, I don't even know where to start. So breaking it down step-by-step, -step, first you're gonna do this, second you're gonna do this. I think that's a really great one for ADHD or specifically because sometimes we're just like, where do I even start? And that analysis paralysis and that task initiation just isn't there. All right, number two is creating weekly or flexible plans for my life. Whether that's a meal plan or a work plan or daily plan, a daily task list, chore chart, whatever it is, creating something that works for me every week and that's customizable, what can happen is it will show you something and then you can automatically go back and be like, no, change that. I always go and edit back the prompt or I edit back the response and give it feedback and say, I don't like this, change it to this. It always listens and always does what I ask, which is nice as an assistant. And so for me, it's really just narrowing down what I need is super helpful. This is especially great, especially if you're blocking your time or trying to come up with a system that works for you. What happens to me is that every week it changes so I can just create a new system every single time on ChatGPT and help me get my week going. All right, this is actually something that I just did this past week and that's navigating complex tasks. For example, I had to fill out this really complicated tax form the other day and all I did was I just screenshotted it and put it in ChatGPT and said, what does this mean? Because it was asking me yes or no questions and I'm like, I don't even know what that means. So ChatGPT would break it down for me, explain it to me and tell me which one I should click on. So as someone who was filling out a form, it was very, very helpful. And then number four is planning out some of my wellness structures. We talked a little bit about how it plans out my week, but it can also can help plan out my meals. It can help plan out my workout routine, um, all the things that I need to do in the next couple days so that I actually have it written down. All right, the next section is helping me declutter and organize both my digital and physical life. So for example, you guys might have seen a video that I did a couple months ago on how I use ChatGPT to organize my house. I would upload photos of a space and say, what would you recommend changing? That was game changing in my house. And I've been doing that for a lot of different things, whether it's my fridge, my you know garage, it helps me almost as like an interior designer or, or organizer to organize all the stuff in my house. 
In addition to that, it can help me organize things on my computer. So coming up with ideas for different labels or different folders, it's been very helpful from the digital and physical organization aspect. The next one is creating systems for my other, other home life items. I'm going to be doing a full video on this, but I have actually been using ChatGPT to help me build a skincare routine. As some of you guys know from one of my previous videos, I actually found out I may be hypermobile, which basically means my skin is extremely fragile and sensitive, which means a lot of the skincare products I was using were way too harsh and were not good for me. So I've actually been using this for both my skin and for my physical health with my hypermobility to just figure out, oh, what, what exercises can I do with my body? What products should I put on my skin? And I have no complaints. Honestly, it is absolutely game changing for me because all of a sudden I know if something is good or bad for me and it has actually introduced me to a lot of different products or things. I actually asked ChatGPT what exercises I should be doing and it said I should get a recumbent bike. So I went on Facebook Marketplace and I bought a recumbent bike and so now I have it in my fitness room. So I'm learning so much about how I can function as a human and it's been super helpful. And then finally, building business systems that I can stick to, whether it's creating frameworks for my CRM, like you guys might have seen in my last video. I use ChatGPT for a lot of things in my business, to-do lists, prioritization, all the things that it can use for my mental load, but also just for my business strategy perspective. I can list off a ton of things I want to do and it will organize it by, you know, you should do this first, or this is what I'd recommend. And it's really giving me helpful feedback. All right. The third category is business marketing and content strategy. So the first one that it helps me with is sometimes I'm creating something quite large, whether it's a course or I'm writing a book and it kind of helps me brain dump and get stuff out of my head so that I am like, wait, I think I want to talk about this, but maybe I'll include this in the, I don't know. Like, and it just helped me organize my thoughts in a way that makes sense, not only to me, but also to the people that are going to be potentially consuming what I'm making. Obviously it's not coming up with the content itself. You guys, I'm not saying it, create this for me. I have all the information here in my head. It's coming out of me and figuring out a way that makes sense. It's organizing and restructuring basically from an outline perspective. That is really what I use it for is outlining and just really figuring out how do I make this sound good in a way that makes people understand it. Another one is helping me plan my content. Um, sometimes it does come up with ideas for me, but it's usually around things that I already know. So it's how do I structure it in a way that makes sense? And what's something that I could do a video on tomorrow? Obviously I have done a lot of work myself, but even coming up with the video idea for this one, I, I asked, I was like, what are some ideas for content around ChatGPT? And they're like, come up with a list of all the ChatGPT ideas. And I'm like, great, I'm going to do that. So even stuff like that, where it's, I, I know I wanted to do a ChatGPT video, but I wasn't sure what it can help me organize this video in a way that made sense from a watcher's perspective. If you're trying to create a content calendar, I will say this is a great, great tool for that. And then number 10, this is actually a new one that I've been using. So ChatGPT came out with a new feature in the last couple of weeks, which is a much better image generation. So one of the things I've been doing is I've been asking ChatGPT to help me come up with ideas for thumbnails and it will create a thumbnail for me, but I actually don't use that thumbnail. I will then go into Canva and recreate that thumbnail because I still like having it made in Canva because then I can still edit things and, and change words around, but it's helpful for me from maybe a color or layout perspective to just know what, what looks good. And I can also, so just give it feedback and be like, mm, I don't like that until it gets to the final draft. And then I can make it myself inside of Canva. All right. The final category, this is probably the one that I think is the most helpful specifically for people who are maybe struggling um, emotionally or mentally. So is using it as a thought partner or self-awareness support. One of the things I struggle with as ADHD or an autistic person is I struggle sometimes with my own blind spots or things that I'm not noticing about patterns in my own brain. Um, also just getting things out and talked about. Uh, I'm a verbal processor, so that's why I have liked therapy in the past, but a lot of times it's just a person listening to me and they don't always give me feedback. I don't really need a listener. I need someone to tell me what to do with that information. And so I actually much prefer uh, ChatGPT in this situation because it's, it will literally sort of parse through my thoughts and really come up with an idea for what I'm saying or what, what I'm not seeing in my own thoughts. Um, kind of digging through that. It's really a mirror to what I'm, I'm trying to say. And that as somebody who doesn't always understand everything I'm thinking is very helpful. I'm pretty good at pattern recognition in a lot of things, but when it comes to myself, not always. The next thing is actually coaching style help on days that I'm dysregulated. It helps me walk through things. If I'm just feeling so overwhelmed, I will literally just talk and again, word vomit to ChatGPT and it will help walk me through the things that I'm really struggling with. And 
it literally, again, tells me all the stuff that's going on in my head and just writes it out so that it, I don't sound insane. Um, it's really finding patterns in the things I'm saying. It's helping me clarify what I'm even saying or what I'm needing help with because then you can start to do research. Um, obviously, social media has been a huge benefit to me the last couple of years in doing a lot of my own research, finding out that I'm autistic, finding out I may be hypermobile, finding out that I, I know I have the MTHFR gene, which I've used ChatGPT to help me understand that. What foods can I eat? Even stuff like that, that has been so helpful for me just to know uh, what I shouldn't be doing with my, my body. And finally, 13, this is kind of an overall, is seeing larger patterns over time. I actually saw a really, really good TikTok. I'll leave a link below, but basically this guy had this prompt, um, which you can screenshot. And he, he said that ask ChatGPT this information, if you've been using it a lot, and it will tell you the strengths and things that you're not seeing. And I asked ChatGPT this, it gave me tons of information. And then I went through and asked it for my blind spots as well. And one of the things it told me in my blind spots is that I tend to not, I tend to hide and, and, and save a lot of my brilliance is what it called it. But I'm like, oh, maybe I need to share more. So that's why last week I did a build with me video on Notion to show my process of how I build on Notion. So sometimes it's helpful to be like, oh, maybe I'm not talking enough about the behind the scenes of my processes. So that's been very, very helpful for me um, as someone who, again, I have a ton of different neurodiverse uh, diagnoses and for me having a lot of support from someone who is not human but is there for me every single day can help me um, sort out my brain has been so so helpful there is a ton more that i use ChatGPT for and i might do some separate videos on because i find this is a very helpful topic specifically for adhders um, let me know what your thoughts are because i would absolutely love to talk more about this um, especially from a practical level obviously i've done a couple of videos that i think i've done pretty well on ChatGPT, but i really think for me it's 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 like people don't always know what they can do and whenever i'm meeting with someone and i'm like wait you don't have it downloaded to your desktop you need it. It's something that I definitely have um, used it a lot for. Now, I know a lot of people have some mixed thoughts about AI. I do as well. I did a whole episode with my friend Carolyn um, on my podcast. So if you haven't subscribed to my Substack, I also recommend subscribing to hers. She has a whole AI Substack. But we talk about some of the pros and cons of AI, some of the things that are you know out there that I don't always agree with. I don't want us to become reliant on AI. However, I do think that not using it when it's available for someone who is neuro neurodivergent and is struggling is it's you're shooting yourself in the foot by not using some of the things that it's helpful for. I have personally, and I'm going to say this again, I've personally found that ChatGPT has changed me as a person. It has made me so much of a better person because of the knowledge I have gained from it. I have made major changes in my life from a health perspective, from a business perspective that has really improved the quality of my life. So for me, I, that's why I'm a fan. Um, obviously there again are pros and cons, but for me right now, in this stage of my life, it has been an invaluable tool uh, to help me just live day to day. So if you want more on ChatGPT, let me know in the comments, uh, send me an email, um, or obviously leave a comment on my Substack. I'll probably see that more. Um, and let me know what you think. Um, if you haven't joined my Substack, I send out one email a week, which has usually the latest YouTube video or the latest podcast episodes. You don't ever miss out. And I would love to chat with you on there as well. So see you guys next time and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.